All right, we're talking 2014, we're talking 20 megapixels, and we are talking a PSE-sized Fovion sensor with a 45 millimeter field of view equivalent, which means we must be talking about the Sigma DP2 Quattro. It's hard to know how to begin this review, frankly, because I have a lot of different feelings about this camera. But let's just first off appreciate how crazy it looks, okay? Now this is not Sigma DP Quattro off the shelf. This is with the LCD viewfinder, which I bought because I think I've said it enough on this channel. I want an EVF. So this, in fact, this attachment, um, it connects to the tripod mount down here. And then this just slides on and this comes off and it gives you maybe the best EVF I've ever used. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's just really big and bright. You get all the information in the screen and it is for me an absolute must have accessory for this camera. It makes it a lot bigger, um, but what's nice is you can take it apart and it packs down pretty well in a bag. Um, so that's that and then this this hood I got for flare and protection of the lens in general. Um, but just off the shelf, this is what it looks like for the most part, minus this. But uh, a very awkward design that was very, I would say, hotly debated when it came out. Holding this Quattro in my hand is like gripping onto a sea urchin tightly. It's absolutely horrible. This is the last of a line of three iterations of these DP bodies. So you had the original DP one, two, and three, and the one, two, and three just equate to various fields of view in terms of focal length equivalent. So you had the DP one, two, and three originals, which came out in about 2008. I actually bought that when it first came out. It was the most expensive camera I ever had bought at that point in my life and I returned it promptly because I was so freaked out by spending so much money on a camera which was, even for its time, very slow. The biggest next iteration was the DP Merrill series. So you had DP1 Merrill, DP2 Merrill, DP3 Merrill, and then this one, the DP1, 2, and 3 Quattro. All right, so the pains of a new camera, but I've now recorded this four times. So this video is going to be a little different. We're really just gonna spend a lot of time with the pictures and less of my talking head, which actually is a great thing because that answers a lot of the feedback I've been getting, which is please show us more pictures. So hope you enjoy the video and this slightly different format. The first thing I can say is Sigma cameras are not for the faint of heart. They are exceptionally unique. They offer something that I can verify is very unlike any other camera I have shot. But along with that quality that it can offer, it offers a very different user experience and a very frustrating post-processing experience. Okay, so a few details about this camera. It came out, as I mentioned, in 2014. It does have that 20 megapixel Fovion sensor, which is essentially three layers of color information, so it's a stacked sen sensor. The Fovion is different because instead of interpolating all these colors onto one sensor plane, they have treated the Fovion sensor in three layers, a red layer, a blue layer, and a green layer, very much like color film. That's how color film is built um, on a negative. And, and the claim to fame for this camera is the color reproduction being much richer, much more accurate, much more depth, um, and much more filmic. I've spent now two weeks with it and I have dug through the internet looking at everything I could find to really understand how to work with this camera and understand, frankly, the cult following and the love for this camera which had it not been for that, I don't think I would have stuck with it because it was so difficult to overcome that barrier to entry. To shoot it actually feels very modern. Like it's pretty responsive. It has a really nice menu layout. I didn't try tracking and stuff. It's not gonna do a good job of tracking. It's not a fast autofocus system. It is contrast detect, so it does work effectively, but the mechanism in the lens itself to focus is slow. I do very much equate this camera 
to a medium format, not only because of the fact that it actually can resolve incredible detail, the fact that you have to post-process these files the way that you do also makes me think of medium format. And I don't necessarily say that as a good thing. I love the final outcome, but the process is slow AF. So know that going in. In terms of features, I mean, there really aren't that many on here. Shutter speeds range from bulb to 1 2,000th second. And thanks to the leaf shutter, it will sync with studio strobes all the way to 1 2,000th of a second. There's no video mode and no scene modes offered on this camera. This is a camera designed for the experienced photographer. The interface is uncluttered to allow for unfettered image making. You can half press to get your focus and then you can turn the zoom and you can refine your focus. There's face detection and all the buttons on the back are really well thought out. This goes up to ISO 6400. I actually don't have a problem shooting in ISO 100 all the time and that's where you're gonna get the best performance from this camera. So I just don't even bother. It has all the modes, aperture, priority, uh, shutter, manual, and program, all that kind of stuff. And it has three custom three custom modes, I think it's three. So the native file format for these Sigma cameras, and it's for all Sigma cameras, is X3F. Everything before the Merrill and the Quattro, those X3F files are actually read by Lightroom. However, the Merrill series, and I don't remember this for certain, but I'm pretty sure it's the Merrill, and definitely the Quattro series are not read by Lightroom. So if you wanna shoot raw, you have to go through the Sigma Photo Pro software or one of the other softwares that read it. DxO does not read it. Uh, Capture One does not read it. Apparently Affinity Photo does read it and there's some softwares like open source softwares that will convert them to DNGs. That being said, you can shoot DNG on this camera. So amazing, right? You can shoot DNG, just import it directly into Lightroom. Well, in my experience, those DNGs are just complete garbage. So I have been editing in Sigma Photo Pro and Sigma Photo Pro is a wonky bit of of software. The software itself is really slow and clunky and I have an M1 chip and then you're bringing it into Lightroom after that. So that adds another step. So it's just, it's slow. That's a bit of a knock. However, I cannot think of another camera that has quite the look of this camera. And again, sometimes it's wackadoodle. Like sometimes the white balance is completely off. Um, and it's hard to fix the white balance. That's my biggest issue actually in Sigma Photo Pro. The white balance is the most frustrating aspect of that software. Huh, I'm giving a lot of negatives right here, but like I said, the final outcome is actually stunning. The merits outweigh the, the toil, but the toil is real. Each shot, instead of costing money, costs time. The way I got around that is through shooting JPEGs. Oddly enough, I discovered that the JPEGs actually edit really nicely in Lightroom. So if it's just snapshot kind of vibes, I'm just keeping it to JPEG and editing the JPEGs. And they actually recover a pretty tremendous amount of detail. Um, the highlights are salvageable in a lot of cases. And uh, I, I really like the look that I'm getting out of them. So the JPEGs have turned out to be really workable. And then the X3F files are there for any further like refinement or any detail work that I wanna do on a select image. Oh, one thing that I love is it has all these different, you know, aspect ratios that you can use. All the sort of standard ones, but it also has 6.7, which, you know, if you love to shoot medium format, it makes a lot of sense that they've incorporated that format in there because that is your Pentax 6.7 format, your RB 6.7 format, very traditional, very popular uh, medium format aspect ratio. And that is what I have mine set to permanently. This camera I don't think is super great in high contrast situations. It's really lovely with like rich, colorful situations, so sunsets. Um, there's even like a, a dedicated JPEG color set here called Sunset Red, which really leans into those reds and actually looks really good. But I'm mostly shooting neutral, leaving everything at default because I am going to X3F and like dialing all of that in in post. So because so much of this camera 
and the frustrations I've experienced with it are post-production issues. I do want to kind of take you into post-production and show you a few files that I've processed and how they are straight out of the camera, what JPEGs look like straight out of camera, just so you can get a sense for um, what it's like to shoot this in a sort of full circle view. So like I've said, you know, a handful of times now, this really is like a medium format camera. I think the resolution feels like a medium format camera, but there is something to the visual signature of these lenses that really does remind me of like a Mamiya 7. So take that for what you will. If you're looking for a digital equivalent, maybe this is actually a camera to consider. Last but not least, we have the camera draw. All these technical difficulties aside tonight, we got to get this one right. Okay, so the camera I'll be shooting for the next two weeks is <laughs> the Nikon 35Ti, which I just was gifted by a neighbor who is the kindest, fuck, excuse my language, the kindest human in the world. Um, He's had this camera forever. It's in mint condition. And he came over one day and said, you know what? I think you should have this. I see you on the street with a camera every day um, and you'll make good use of this. So thank you so much to my neighbor who gifted this camera to me. It's a gem and I'm really excited to give it a go. So you can expect to see more pictures from the Nikon 35Ti on Instagram at one month, two cameras. And I'll be back in two weeks to review it hopefully with less technical difficulties. Mm -hmm.